emergent gameplay a lot of people have been talking about that video the emergent gameplay video it's time i'm about to react andy and just put it up what is the definition of emergent gameplay emergent gameplay is just when the game reacts to your decision now the game is a react andy what do you mean by that i feel like this is getting to buzzword territory where we're just saying emergent gameplay is cool or what we want these days it is true that these games are designed in a way to be more accessible for people to see and understand what the moves are useful for and not only you know are the games clearer in their intent they also tell you hey this is what this move is used for you use this move like this and combining that with replays and the amount of information that comes out there is kind of like a homogenized style or set of ideas that will be much more common i don't think that that's a bad thing in fact i think it makes fighting games much easier for people to jump into and it, it obviously raises the level of play because everybody can start doing things that are better much faster they don't have to wait for like the one big tournament a year that comes out and then just be like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Does everybody remember back in 2013 when Sien won Evo with Gen and everybody was like, we hadn't even seen a lot of the shit he was doing. It is so much harder to hide things like that because every player streams. And even if you're not streaming at the time, if you want to play against another high level player, they are probably streaming. And even if neither of you are streaming, Everybody follows all the high-level player accounts and rips their replays. It was an issue even with KOF when it came out. There was like a lot of top players who were not playing online and like dodging people in, in ranked and stuff like that. And they essentially said, hey, like we're boomers. We don't play as a performance for other people. So like we usually, we're not kind of used to the streaming era where everybody has gameplay all the time. It is so easy to find footage of any character at a high level and because of that it's so easy to just see what they're doing and then copy and do the good stuff you can find videos where kai players are streaming and they're like yeah in this matchup i try to do this 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 and this and then watch them do that and whatever anybody else is doing that's effective you can just take that and implement it into your gameplay so fast i don't know if you've heard people say like you know one of the issues with modern games is that everybody plays the same i always think there's like a skill level of like here and down it always looks the same they're all kind of trying to do the same thing and they're trying to do it but they always flub it or they make they kind of overcommit or they undercommit or they do something wrong like it is only really the top percentage of people where you're really impressed by their decision making and the things they do and all the cool stuff at the highest level because it takes unique understanding of the character that maybe you don't have if you're not at that level or unique decision making because you're a more experienced player or you have better sense of strategy or when to do things or why to do things or unique like cases of like oh yeah this move is useful in this one scenario against this one character's move or whatever it is you know you have more accumulated information even if two people sit down and learn the same character and they know that the tools are strong like we won't do the same things in every scenario you might value trying to rps in a situation while someone else might value creating space or getting in or uh trying to keep mid-range while the other person's like mid-range no i want to get near them or i want to create more space or whatever it is when i watch mochi play soul i I don't understand anything he does everything he does is so weird to me i'm like i don't know what he's doing but it's like it's good let's watch like a round and see if he does anything weird he hit 2p which is like already i'm like this dude is on drugs how often have you seen me hit 2p with soul ever i don't think i've hit this button more than five times since the game came out i just want you to think about that i, I never hit 2p with soul okay i would not, that's already we've seen a couple of things i would never do also, not the combo I would do here, for instance. What the fuck is that? Whiffing the far slash after? I don't even know if he's if he's plus here. It's probably plus. It looks plus. I would never do that, though. I think, like, whoa. Yeah, his play style is so strange to me. Like, the jump P air to air is not something I would do a lot. Run off 5P or, or 2Ps or anything like that. Is none of this. Oh, God. The way he uses the air approach like that is, like, is a little. It's very, like, old Exert style. That is so weird. Him standing there and doing neutral jump, jump K to beat the jump in is not, I would just ground it anti area. I would never do that. But if you want to watch like a high level player of some character now compared to like five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years ago, the difference is so vast in terms of your options. The funny thing to me too is that, yeah, I think the reality is, is that it, games like Strive and like Street Fighter V compared to their predecessors are designed for people to be able to understand and interact with them 
and play the games without being lost about what is even happening. Because the further back you go in games, the more there are situations where the uses of moves are kind of unclear. Like you have some moves that just suck. And the things you are supposed to do are maybe a bit obtuse and like you have to find, you know, there's like strange use cases or some move just like doesn't have a hurt box in some position because like they forgot some move is punishable on hit and so like you can't use it there's lots of issues the the modern versions of so many characters they take away a lot of the stuff that just didn't work or was not easy to use or or was like very niche and they made the most core version of the character that they could with tools that have specific use and they're not going to just be these like whack like okay there's not really a point to use this most of the time right souls hmc and strive is like a very cool move but it's bad i get asked constantly well do hmc why haven't you done hmc is hmc used for anything how do i use it or how you know what am i supposed to do with that i'm like you don't use it it's bad i think that's like unsatisfying for a lot of people because that move is like one of the coolest looking things he has. But like you have to figure out how do you have more there without just running into a bunch of stuff that's useless or a trap or like it doesn't work. It's like you just use that move and it's like actually really bad and it just gets you killed. Games before you can kind of feel the slap togetherness of them and it probably ends up feeling really unique and cool and you make fun games and situations out of them. But it's not always the case that that's a good thing. There are some times where the slap togetherness of the game feels fucking bad. But I also enjoy old games for what they are. Like I'm not somebody who hates any older fighting games really. Like I have played all of them and I liked all of them then and I like the new games too. And you see it when a new game comes out like Strive and people are complaining about these versions of the characters and it's like these are the most distilled versions of the characters that exist i'm supposed to understand that people like are mad that this game is more straightforward but also that the stuff that's in this game is too annoying or frustrating or strong to deal with when like these characters are doing far less ridiculous things than they did in the old versions right so it's like you're being pulled in two different directions at the same time and often by different groups of people. The shit that they did and you had to deal with in the older games were so nasty compared to this. And like dealing with them was harder and defending against them was harder and doing everything was harder. It is a very weird thing to think about. Something that I see a lot is people say like, man, the reason I love KOF or this game or that game compared to Street Fighter is that you're free. You can move, you can fly around the screen, you can do all this stuff. You have freedom in these games compared to Street Fighter. But also that is the point of Street Fighter, is it not? Like the point of Street Fighter is they want the game to be more grounded and slow paced in the same way that they want a game like Marvel or Guilty Gear or Blaze Blue or whatever to be like a high flying kind of fast paced wild game. And in KOF, if everybody was on the ground all the time, you'd be like, this doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? If they all are there to satisfy different types of gameplay that you enjoy, right? The grander problem to me a lot of the times is so many people uh, I think talk about the old games so nostalgically and how much they love them and stuff. But like a lot of people who talk about that stuff didn't play or enjoy those games. And I remember because I was around when those games came out and they all just talk shit about them. Not everybody, obviously. A lot of people do like those games and they still play them, which is cool because I still think they're fun and I still play them too. Probably two or three years before Strive came out, I was playing a lot of Exert and I was interested in the game. And I remember how grumpy people were about Exert. And, you know, that's normal for any player base. But then I like Strive comes out and suddenly that game was like the greatest game ever. And it had like no flaws. And you're just, it's like such a weird thing to watch over and over and just experience. Same thing with every NRS game ever. I mean, NRS games have it on a two year cycle. So it's very easy to see. I don't think it's just like old game is actually bad and new game is actually good. It's not that either, but it's also just so strange when you hear people talk about intentional design in new fighting games as like a bad thing. Like you can design intentionally and also just have a lot of options for the characters to do. Like it, there's nothing wrong with designing intentionally, but also creating lots of movement and, and like high power level and like all that kind of stuff. It's like fine to create that kind of game. The emergent gameplay thing to me is just really funny, mostly honestly. I should watch those videos while watching them all. I just constantly find myself thinking like, yeah, this motherfucker's spitting. Brian's video is like very different. You bring up a lot of good points about older games and like unintentional things that define them. A lot of old games actually are probably almost unplayable without those things. Like they would be not probably fun games to play without them. Dev's video is really focused on intention and then also like the issue with modern games compared to older games and like people's ability to parse them and understand them. Specific stuff about gear in particular that like I think is really 
there's a lot of good in there. It's also interesting because I think even the original video, Max's video, he's really like hype about cool offense. And when he brought up DNF, I thought that was really interesting because I think DNF is a great example of a game I would not describe as what he's describing. I think DNF seems like a game where you will run out of unique things to do incredibly fast and also the gatlings in the game are so incredibly limited and the offense is so toothless the stuff that struck me as like particularly like effective was mostly things that hit you from far away because movement was so limited and mix-ups were so weak if you want things that take up 80 percent of the screen space and hit everywhere and are funny like big spinny wheel then you need to also let me move you know, you gotta let me move and you gotta let me twerk on someone when I get in. But it's also an early version of the game, so I'm not that harsh about it. Can't block button grappler, that's true. But I don't think command grab or strike is a particularly emergent game <laughs> gameplay option. The thing is, is I don't like Max is not somebody who's gonna like optimize the game and like really sit there and do the best things ever. Even in the games that he loves, there are optimal ways to play them, and I don't think he likes them, probably. The way to play 3S optimally is like, he doesn't, he's not gonna wanna play like that. The way to play like Marvel 3 optimally, also, he does not wanna do. And all of the games I think he likes for the reasons that they're open and have cool stuff to do, have end games that are probably not interesting for him, which is fine. At the same time, you know, I think that speaks against to the point about their looseness, probably. What most people are looking for is before the game is solved, they want that experience to feel interesting. And once it makes it to the end game where the only things to improve are incremental and like they're small things, it's not like learn this brand new system of offense. It's like, can I make this tight and like make these options clean and, you know, optimize this pressure for this situation and like strategically decide like, how do I want to approach this matchup or that matchup or whatever? The things to, to figure out there are far less wide and interesting and eye-opening and are far more like grinding out the little details. And some people are in for, for a lifetime. Like they are okay grinding out little details for thousands of hours. There are a lot of us like that. I'm okay with that. But some people do not like that. They are like, I want to learn big, new, shiny thing often. And I think Max probably falls into that category and a lot of other people fall into that category. And it's why they're okay with like new games or new patches or new things that shake things up. While people who are like, they want the like nitty gritty, like impressive small details and like incremental improvements to really matter, want the game to be more stable or like they're interested in games that are going to develop long-term rather than just like, okay, new thing. I have no problem with people who think the new games are designed in ways that are not interesting for them. I also have no problem with people who don't like the old games or new games for any other reason. And in a situation like the Max video or the other people, you notice everybody who's talked about it is like basically somebody who is really invested in fighting games long term and like the long term version of these games. Deb and Brian and LK and myself compared to Max are more down to like get into the nitty gritty of a game and get to the end and like these small incremental things that we really care about. Whereas Max, I don't think that's ever been like the thing about fighting games that he enjoys or hasn't been for a long time. So it's not surprising that the opinions are are differing. Some people are not, they're not trying to think back like that. Some people are just like, I want to just freestyle and everything I freestyle to feel like it, it's fine. I mean, every game can be solved. You know, it doesn't matter how open your game is built. People will come up with the best choices and options no matter what. There's not really a way to freestyle and make it the best choice always. You can if you're like really, really, really good and you are just that strong and you understand the game and the system that well. But when that's the case, you also are probably making the correct decisions or or more correct decisions than your opponent who is more optimal. Someone like Kazunoko, for instance, is a great example. He never does the right shit, right? Like Kazunoko does whack combos and will play the game in like a very watered down way compared to other players. But he just consistently wins the interactions so much that it doesn't matter that he's not doing the most optimal shit because like... He just is that good. Whereas somebody who's like more polished will need less interactions to win. But if you're just not Kazunoko and you don't win everything that you force, then it's, what are you supposed to do? You watch like Sonic Fox play a game and you're like, okay, well, if I want to win, all I have to do is be right every time. I'll never forget when LK, I, somebody asked LK, why don't you whip punish with this? And LK said, I'm a fucking coward. The reason I don't do that is because I'm a fucking coward and I can't just be right. So because of that, I'm going to do the safe option that is less rewarding, but gives me a good, like, you know, 
it, it does the same job. It was a great understanding that you are not doing potentially what could be the best answer, but that it's a consistently better answer for you. I don't think anybody's wrong in that discussion you know what i mean everybody's got their own perspective everybody talked about something else different in their video which is funny because i think a lot of people will just take whatever anybody says and like just run with it but everybody said something different i want to watch these videos now on stream i want to i want to react everybody's done one i feel left out this is a psa to all eris viewers eris says a lot of things that are funny Right, we all think that Eris is a funny guy. You're not Eris. So when you say the thing that he says that's funny, when it comes out of your mouth, no one laughs, okay? So just let him say it and then we all laugh together and then we'll move on, right? Like you're not, unless you are Eris, like, oof, I was Eris the whole time, internet. Like, if you're actually Eris the whole time, my bad, I didn't, <laughs> my bad.